everyone. If you have been working on special integrals, then you just can't miss this video as it is packed with all the intelligent, smart, challenging, yet interesting questions. Let's take a sneak peek into what we have in today's video. These are the questions planned for this video. I am sure you're going to enjoy them. So these are the six special integrals that we require for today's video. In case you don't know how to derive or apply them, do check out the previous part. By looking at the very first question, it no way resembles any of these forms. However, if you have done integration by substitution, you know the moment I put e raised to power x as t, this gives us e raised to power x dx is dt. So, the integral changes to, this part changes to dt upon e raised to power 2x is the same as e raised to power x square that makes it t square plus 60 plus 5. You know we can complete the square by if you take 6, take its half that's 3, you add and subtract its square. So I'll be adding and subtracting 9 to this. Taking the first 3 terms this becomes t plus 3 whole square and this one gives us minus 2 square. Now of course it has taken the form which is x square minus a square. Remember we discussed in the previous video that this x basically stands for any linear function which of course t plus 3 is with coefficient of x as 1. So here of course the coefficient of t is 1. Brilliant! We can apply the formula. So applying this formula, it becomes 1 upon 2a into log mod of x minus a upon x plus a plus c, which gives us 1 by 4 log t plus 1 upon t plus 5 plus c. You know the basic rule. Never leave your answer here. Replace back. You get 1 by 4 log e to the power x plus 1 upon e to the power x plus 5 plus c. So once again, if you have a look at second question, you do realize the moment you put log x as t, it will take the form which we want. So put log x as t, the derivative would be 1 by x dx as dt, so the integral transforms to dt upon, this is 60 square plus 70 plus 2. Now once more, in order to complete the square, take the 6 common. So you are left with t square plus 7 by 60 plus 2 by 6 that gives you only 1 by 3. Now once again in order to complete the square, take 7 by 6, take its half which is 7 by 12. Take its whole square, which will be 49 by 144. So you need to add and subtract this, this number. I add 49 by 144 and I subtract the same from here. So the whole square becomes t plus 7 by 12 whole square. So on solving these two, this term would become minus 1 upon 144. So the entire integral gets transformed to t plus 7 by 12 whole square minus 1 by 12 whole square. Now here of course you can once again apply this formula and write your final answer. So now this is what the integral becomes. Apply the formula. It is 1 upon 2a into log x minus a upon x plus a plus c. On simplifying you get log of mod 2t plus 1 upon 3t plus 2 plus c. And now just put back the value of t as log x. Okay now look at this one. Uh, if you directly see, you cannot really substitute something because you do not have something directly given to you. One of the things that work beautifully for the form, which is 1 upon x into x raised to power n plus 1 is, 
always multiply and divide with the derivative of this term. For instance, it is nx raised to power n minus 1. So, I will multiply and divide with that. So, the numerator stays the same. These two get combined. We get x raised to power n into x raised to power n plus 1. How does that help? Now, the moment you take this as t or only x raised to power n as t, the derivative is right there and the question becomes so simple. So now, have a look at this. Derivative for x raised to power 5 plus 1 is 5x raised to power 4. So I begin by multiplying and dividing with the derivative. I am deliberately not cancelling out 5 because we would need it. So I can take this 5 out and we have 5x raised to power 4. This is x raised to power 5 into x raised to power 5 plus 1. And now the moment you put x raised to power 5 as t, it is 5x raised to power 4 dx is dt. So the question transforms to dt upon t into t plus 1. Brilliant. Now all you need to do is complete the square and apply this special integral. So this one becomes dt upon t square plus t. Going by the same logic, taking its coefficient, its half which is 1 by 2, adding and subtracting its square. So this takes the form t plus 1 whole square minus 1 by 2 square and once again it is this formula. Apply it and enjoy your answer. Look at this one. I cannot multiply divide with anything. I cannot make any substitution right away. So what do I do? First and foremost, change this secant to cos. Take the LCM and see what happens. Once we write your secant x as 1 over cos x, this becomes cos x whole upon sin x cos x plus 1. It still doesn't seem to help. So what shall we do? One trick. Multiply and divide with 2. See what happens. This makes it 2 cos x upon 2 plus 2 sin x cos x. Now, very interesting, I am going to split this 2 cos x as cos x plus cos x and add and subtract sin x. So now, just separate out these two integrals. The first one gives us cos x plus sin x whole upon 2 plus 2 sin x cos x. And the next integral as cos x minus sin x whole upon 2 plus 2 sin x cos x into dx. Now I call these as i1 and i2. Taking the i1, taking the integral i1 which is cos x plus sin x whole upon 2 plus 2 sin x cos x. Now I want the numerator to become the derivative. For that, put sin x minus cos x as t. How? Because the moment you take the derivative, this becomes cos x plus sin x dx is dt, which would do our work. So this implies cos x plus sin x dx is dt. But what do I do with this? Another idea, just take its whole square. So I take sin x minus cos x whole square. This gives you t square. Now when you open the brackets, it's sin square x plus cos square x minus 2 sin x cos x is t square. So from here I get my 2 sin x cos x 1 minus t square. This transforms my i1 to, this becomes dt upon 2 
plus in place of 2 sin x dx, I have 1 minus t squared. So this gives us dt upon 3 minus t squared. Isn't that super simple and one of the forms for which you know the derivative? Well, this gives us the answer. Because your 3 could be written as root 3 whole square, so a square minus x square, this gives us the answer 1 upon 2a log root 3 plus t upon root 3 minus t plus c1. And now put back the value of this t. Please note here my a stands for root 3, so I'm going to replace it with that. Now how do we tackle your i2? So now working the same way, I want to create this as my derivative. So I'm going to put sin x plus cos x as t this time. So the derivative is right there, cos x minus sin x dx is dt. Now once again I take the whole square, so I'll get 1 plus 2 sin x cos x is equal to t square. So your 2 sin x cos x becomes t square minus 1. Let's put it over here. So my i2 now changes to dt upon 2 plus t square minus 1. So this reduces to dt upon t square plus 1 which is nothing but tan inverse of t plus c2. Now, you just have to combine the two integrals and write your final answer. Now, your i was i1 plus i2. So, I'm going to replace my values. This will be 2 root 3 log root 3 plus this t was sin x minus cos x whole upon root 3 minus sin x minus cos x. Plus, I write this one tan inverse of my t from here was sin x plus cos x. And in the end, I combine this c1 and c2 and write collectively only one c. So, where my c stands for c1 plus c2. And this is our answer. I know it's long. I know it's a 6 marker. But if you go through each and every step, Slowly, you would realize it's, it's challenging but interesting. Now for the fifth one, we begin by rationalizing. So that makes it sine of x minus alpha on the top. And in the denominator, I get square root of x plus alpha into sine of x minus alpha. Now I'm making use of a very interesting property which was sine of a plus b into sine of a minus b is equal to sine square a minus sine square b which is something that you would have done in class 11th trigonometry. So this converts my denominator to square root of sine square x minus sine square alpha. Very conveniently you can split this as sin x into cos alpha minus cos x into sin alpha. Once again, I'm using the formula sin a minus b and the denominator as it is. Now just separate out the two integrals. Your i1 becomes cos alpha goes out sin x upon sine square x minus sine square alpha and your i2 changes to when I separate this sine alpha being a constant comes out cos x upon sine square x minus sine square alpha and my i becomes i1 plus i2 now the problem with this one is again I don't know what to do like for i2, it's still simple. I can simply put my sin x as t. So you know your cos x dx is dt. Thus your i2 changes to sin alpha into dt upon square root of t square minus sin alpha whole square. This sin alpha acts like your a. It's a constant. So 
the answer over here would be log mod t plus this entire thing repeated plus say i call it c2 and put back the value of t as sin x what do i do to my i1 where the substitution is not this straightforward let's look at that your i1 still if i want to put my cos x as t it's again simple let the numerator be as it is and you substitute your sin square x as 1 minus cos square x minus sin square alpha please try to see here your 1 and sin square alpha are just constants so now put your cos x as t so now if you see your 1 minus sin square alpha could also be written as simply cos alpha and this becomes cos square alpha minus cos square x. Now simply put your cos x as t. You have minus sin x dx is dt. So your i1 changes to minus dt upon cos square alpha or cos alpha whole square minus t square. Once again apply the formula which is a square minus x square that gives us sine inverse of x by a plus c1. Now just substitute the values of, now substitute your t back. So this gives us sine inverse of cos x by cos alpha plus c1. So you have your i1 here, you have your i2 here. Add the two and give the final answer. I thoroughly enjoyed solving these questions with you people. I hope you did the same. If yes, then please hit the like button, share this video, spread the message around and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I would see you with a new video. Until then, bye-bye.